Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Girl. Verticillium wilt in canola was first found in Manitoba back in 2014. Last year, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency conducted a cross-country survey for the disease and found it in six provinces. Joining us here on Real Agriculture now, we have Pradasara Bajracharya, field crop pathologist with Manitoba Agriculture. Pradasara, the findings of uh, the CFIA survey, what... Uh, what do these mean for uh, what does this mean for uh, for canola growers across the country? Um, it basically means that canola growers have one more disease to worry about. Um, but then, um, looking at the survey results, it's found in six different um, provinces. But then they also mentioned that it doesn't seem to be uh, causing any yield loss yet. So that's good news. Um, but that definitely means that uh, canola growers should be um, looking out for disease during the field, come in field season. Um, and if they do suspect that they have verticillium wilt, um, they probably want to get tested um, so that they know for sure they have it or not. So that would be the way to go. So do we know how high concentrations had to be to, uh, to test positive in this survey? And along with that, how high, uh, how high it needs to be to actually impact yield in, in canola? Um, so the survey was done by CFIA, um, and we did not, like Manitoba Agriculture did not, um, uh, it wasn't our survey per se, but, um, and the survey initially was designed to look at the distribution and not at the concentration in individual fields. So we don't have that kind of information as of today. In the future, if we, um, that might be something that's useful, right? So, um, but as I said, like that's not available as of today. Okay. So in terms of, of biosecurity and sanitation practices that growers should be following, is this very similar to, uh, to club root? Yes, that would be correct. So Verticillium longisperm is also a soil-borne pathogen, meaning it lives and thrives in soil for long periods of time. Um, from the data that we have from Europe, it has been found that it, is, um, it can stay in soil. Like microsclerosia from Verticillium longisperm can stay in soil for a long period of time, up to 15 years, 20 years. Um, if the susceptible host, like canola, is grown for a long period of time, it obviously increases the inoculum in soil. Um, so basically, um, anything that you do for club root, like biosecurity practices um, involving cleaning your equipment and crop rotation um, and things like that would definitely help manage this disease. With c- club roots, we have resistant varieties and, and tools like that. We've had the time to uh, to test for for resistance where are we at with verticillium wilt i guess we're still in the very early stages of under understanding it in uh, in canada so uh we've known uh, that club root is in um canada for a long period of time compared to verticillium longiforum and obviously there are more options for a club root um at this point but verticillium longiforum we have just found out that it's here and we just found out about its distribution through cfia survey um, unfortunately, at this point, there is um, no resistant varieties available in Canada uh, for the varieties that we grow in Canada. We don't know anything about uh, resistance to susceptibility. Obviously, we need more research in that part. Um, and also, unfortunately, there is no um, chemical uh, control available at this point, no seed treatment or foliar fungicide available at this point against this disease. So... Where does the industry go from here? It sounds like there are lots of aspects to this that uh, that need more research, and uh, including whether this is significant or how significant this is for uh, for canola growers. Who who initiates or or who leads the next steps? What what happens next? Um, well, at this point, CFIA has completed its survey, but it hasn't really uh, keeping in mind that it hasn't. Uh, made a decision on its regulatory status, so uh, we'll have to definitely wait for that and um, see what that brings, like if it's going to be regulated or not. That's to, that's up to CFIA and the survey results, right? So um, once that is done, then obviously there would be more areas for research open uh, regarding this pathogen because this is a brand new pathogen in Manitoba and in Canada, so um, we basically don't know anything about it in terms of what kind of yield loss it causes, 
how long does it survive in Canadian soil, and um, does our varieties have any resistance, like natural resistance against it at all? So um, as we as we go through this process of identifying um, issues and problems, it would become more clear in the long run. But as of now, I think um, just following these cultural practices that you would anyways for other diseases like club root, um, like crop rotation and equipment sanitation, and making sure that you don't move soil as much as possible would help. And that would definitely be the start point. So in the meantime, though, research is up in the air until CFI determines its its regulatory status? Um, yeah, it's kind of up in the air until then, but definitely as soon as the regulatory status um, is known, then there'd be like more opportunities for research and things like that. So we do so we do our annual canola disease survey every year. So while we do that and look for other diseases, um, we'll definitely be on the, on the lookout for very soon and longisporum symptoms as well in the field. Along those lines, what are uh, what are the symptoms that growers should be looking for when uh, when scouting their their canola this year? So um, one of the unfortunate things with this disease is that um, it looks very much like in its early stages, it looks very much like fusarium wilt. Um, it causes brown striping on one side of the stem while the other side of the stem is still green, so which is very typical of um, fusarium wilt. Um, however, if you go out in the field uh, post-harvest or during the time of harvest, then you can see um, microsclerotia forming on the stem. So that is one of the identifying characters um, of this particular pathogen. So if you look at the stem, you'd see a little bit of shredding, not as much as in case of sclerotin infection, but very little shredding. And underneath the epidermal layer, you'll see some microsclerotia, um, which would uh, be in severely infected case, which would be visible um, under hand lens. Um, but a more diagnostic approach would be taking it to a diagnostic lab and getting it tested visually, as well as by uh, polymer H chain reaction methods, which is also known as PCR methods. What about in season? Is there something that growers or agronomists should be looking for? Um, definitely be on the lookout for any um, early maturing, pre, like ripening patches and um, any stunting that you observe in the field, any patch that is um, that looks stunted, is maturing early or not doing very well, would be something um, to look for. Um, unfortunately, this is also something very similar to cub root. So you'll see like um, patches of early maturing, ripe, pre-ripening, um, and wilting patches in the field. So if you do see um, things like striping, brown striping on the stem early in the season, then that's an indication that um, it may be verticillium longisporum. It may as well be fusarium wilt, but, you know, like you'd have to get tested at that point. However, um, the best time to scout for this disease is obviously at the harvest time because at the harvest time, um, or post-harvest, because at that time it's forming, the pathogen is forming microsclerotia on the stem, and it's obviously more distinguishing at that point. So, something to keep in mind. All right. Thanks for your time, Pradasara. Thank you, Calvin. Mm-hmm.